all right guys it's jc i know it's been a while since i posted my last video what's up um currently it's an update i don't know if you guys can see that that is now 583 miles so what's new about the bike um so let me just start off first thing tires right they're different they're not the stock tires and i want to address something about this the tires the stock tires work fine for me you know i didn't have a flat on them i you know they're fine uh it's just something happened to a friend of mine their bike went flat and where i live in san jose if you're out there trying to fix your bike on the main road somewhere the likelihood of you getting your bike robbed and yourself robbed is high so spending 30 minutes um trying to fix a, a flat tire is not as safe um depends where you live you know it's not every part of san jose but the the ride the, the routes that i take um just happens to have those particular areas that have a known high crime um like especially san francisco you know i go to san francisco a lot too um you guys probably seen on tv or you know like they, they target tourists or anybody that's not from there they literally snatch like smash the the car windows in broad daylight and nobody does anything um currently in berkeley uh there is a high um crime rate for bike theft um some people there they are starting to recognize uh certain bikes like for example like those mountain bikes by santa cruz or trek bikes if you look those up online, they're like eight thousand to ten thousand dollars, and they will rob you. They will literally put you on uh, like you know gun at gunpoint out of your car. They'll steal the car, take the bikes, and leave the car somewhere. That's how bad it is. So me having a flat tire in one of those areas is not the best thing to be fixing a flat tire on the side of the road. You know I could do it. I've done it. It, it doesn't bother me, but just for safety reasons and another thing that i want to talk about is the tires so these tires are shinkos they're motor motorcycle tires they are very thick um and they're very heavy compared to the um stock tires the reason why i went with these tires is that if you guys live in the bay area um especially in san jose mostly bay area throughout the bike lanes have so much bolts, nuts, nails, you can name it, that you'll find more bolts and nuts on the road than you can find on like Home Depot or Lowe's. Like, I'm not even joking. There's so much of those that it's ridiculous. Um, so far, lucky, I, like, I've never had the opportunity to like run one over and pop my tires. And it doesn't matter if you have like uh, a flat out or some sealant in there, it doesn't matter. You have flat out or a tannis, it will puncture. There is no tires out there that is 100% puncture proof, right? Um, the reason why I went with these, they're a lot thicker, um, a lot heavier. So they're stronger in terms of uh, if I encounter one. Um, so that's why I went with these. Uh, the downside with going with these tires um, is that they're they're heavy. They do um, make the bike taller, so if you could barely reach the floor, the this will add like an inch higher. Um, what's another thing? And when you're buying motorcycle tires or you know tires, and some people will say that you will actually void your warranty it's a choice like it's for my safety i have to do it i need to do it and you know i hope aerial riders they, they they follow me on instagram so you guys should follow me too on instagram um but it's for safety reasons like i i have the tires at home i didn't throw them away they're perfectly in, in good condition i just i don't want to risk my life for something if that makes sense but I, I think everywhere else i can't say for sure but i feel like every other state you should be fine with the uh the stock stock tires um another thing with these the tire size right so our stock tires are 20 by 4 tire 20 meaning the rim is 20 inches and then by 4 when they say 4 is the width 
So if you were looking at this way, it's the uh, the width. These ones in particular, motorcycle tires are measured differently. So these are Shinko's 3.0 and the particular size is 16. Um, you guys can Google how the, the ratio is set up, um, how the conversion is, but if you're looking for a 20 inch tire, that is the particular size. Three meaning this is actually smaller in width from the um the stock so yeah, small smaller width and then 16 as the ratio for the, the the rim size it's the way that they measure the diameter of the the rim um if you have a 26 inch um e-bike out there a fat tire i heard you could find um tires uh, motorcycle tires out there for um a 26 inch but i heard it's really difficult to find and I'm not too familiar with that. So you might have to do some research of like what motorcycle tires may be available for a 26 inch. What else do I have? Oh yes, um, brakes, that's the next one. The brakes, that's the next one. Uh, I will be ordering new brake pads. As of right now, my brakes are fine. They're working, but I know it's since I'm already past 500. I'm going to be changing them soon. Uh, you could tell when you actually, you know, press the brake, it'll depress further. Usually like when you first get it, it's like up here. It's because that's because like the brake pads, the thickness of the brake pads, they deteriorate after a while. So they start to slim down, meaning you got to put more, more pressure into the lever to actually stop the, the bike. Um, so a couple questions came up uh what type of brake pads do i need and for your aerial rider uh so for the grizzly and the x-class specifically um the rotors i'll start with the rotors they're 180 millimeters um if, if you bend your rotors i i suggest buying a new rotor <laughs> you can probably find one on amazon the important thing with rotors is that you make sure that your bolts are secure and tight. Two, um, the brake pads. That's another one, the biggest one, the brake pads. So there are three types of brake pads that you can get. There is the first one, which is resin or organic brake pads. They are quieter when you do, you know, use your brake. Uh, they do wear off, you know, they basically run off pretty quick um that means you'll be changing them often um but if you like quiet brakes that's one uh, they don't actually stop faster compared to the other one that i'm about to talk about but like i said it's quieter the second one is metallic basically metal to metal into the rotors um one thing about the rotors is that the metal one will stop you a lot faster it will also generate a lot of heat because the, the contact, the friction that it does with the rotor will generate a lot of heat. I'm not too particular like, or, or too uh, familiar with the Tektros at this point, but sometimes when you heat up those areas, it can actually boil the oil in those pistons and around the area. It, it will conduct heat really, really fast. And up, like I said, I'm not too familiar. I haven't tested those, but yeah, those are the strongest one. Like for mountain bikes, if you're downhilling, if you go downhill all the time, you would want to go with metallic. Uh, and then they're also really loud. I mean, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to be loud every time you hit the brake, but the tendency for it to be loud is very high compared to a resin or an organic. The next one is a hybrid you could say it's a resin and a metallic one so the, the the composition of the brake pad is both resin and metallic and with that each company has their own mixture so you know they don't they won't tell you like oh this is like 50 percent metallic and 50 percent organic or whatever it is so you might have to play around so there's a 
50 50 chance that you're gonna get like a fast one or like a loud one so you might have to play around with those um, but mostly most of the time those will be decent enough to change and put on your bike that's what i'm gonna put mine uh put on mine i'm going to experiment with some other brake pads out there like from amazon just to test them out and to see who, which one's louder which ones you know generate more heat which one uh what's another thing i need to address if you don't clean your rotors right uh let's say i don't know you went and you, there's like mud or something i don't know you touched it you were eating a burrito or you're like eating a taco somewhere and you got oil and you touch your rotor for some reason what happens with your brake pads they actually deplete in a particular way like they instead of stopping and clamping onto the rotors the brake pads composition itself becomes glossy and they call it glossy pads where it won't so the moment you press your brake it won't actually grab onto the rotor right away it will actually skip and then grab on and you'll hear like the hum, 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 like the like a weird like jumping noise on the rotors it'll stop you very dangerously well it will stop you eventually and it will generate more heat and this particular condition happens often with resin and organic because um, it's so soft that there's a tendency like it, it gets sanded down to like a smooth shiny glossy uh, material and it does it occurs at any time like you could get it and you could put new resin on there and like after a week of writing it gets really bad and where it just glosses out so make sure you clean your your um your your disc brakes and also when you put a new pad also wipe it down with alcohol um, rubbing alcohol doesn't matter 71 91 rubbing alcohol just don't put any other material you want that as as clean as possible so what's the next one uh i did just clean the calipers themselves where the brake pads are um, i'll clip that video right now real short all right so you've seen that basically that's how you care for the uh the the brake pads and the brake system another thing is that another question is do i need to bleed out my my hydraulic brakes uh it depends if you've you know over time eventually you'll lose a certain amount of fluid into your brake lines but most of the time actually when you change the brake pads there's a piston it's like a circle piston it's silver you want to use a flat like some kind of material you could even use the whole the old brake get a nose uh a needle nose plier right and then squeeze it down so the piston is actually flush with the caliper what that does is push back the the, the oil back up doesn't necessarily work every time but uh most of the time it will actually return the, the the oil back up and you should be fine just don't like squeeze it and press it like it's supposed to be a, a slow press if you guys are you know if you've done your own car you and if you, you know if not a lot of people do their own brakes in the car but it's it follows the same way when you you know take out your old brakes the piston actually protrudes over time and then when you put a new brake with the thick the thick composition on there you're gonna have to depress the piston back to the original position same thing with the bikes follow the same rule like same thing with flushing everything follows the same rule um i haven't I don't think I'm gonna do a flushing just yet. Maybe 2,000, 3,000 miles, I'll end up doing a flushing on the bike, but not right now. The next thing about the bike that I do want to talk about is the LED. Somebody talked about that. Uh, so the LED of the bike. So I live in San Jose. People are blind during the day. And so I have an LED strip that I basically run down right here. Um, I didn't modify the bike. It, it's just an Amazon thing that you could just add on. You just, it's sticky on the, uh, it's actually sticky on the other side. They're about $8 for a foot or a meter. I think it's a meter. Um, 
and it gets powered through a USB right here and these lights that I use from Amazon as well they have a USB port here that I basically connect at night um, for this reason is that a lot of people don't see bikes at night even with the light and like especially the area that I live in uh, these these reflectors on the wheels they suffice at a certain degree depending on where you live because you know that's very subjective to where you live I have a light that does an underglow on my whole bike and then I have these two basically flashing I have one on this side and I have one on the other side as well that would flash and I'll probably like show a photo or like uh, a video of it pretty quick if you actually follow me on Instagram, you could see both both of it working at the same time. And then a lot of people are like, oh, you put too much stuff on your bike. You're like, yeah, I would have to say come to San Jose. Let's see what happens with you on the road, you know? Especially if you're wearing a dark, uh, dark visor at night. Yes, this light will work if you're using a clear visor or no helmet at all. Works perfectly fine, the stock headlight. But if you're wearing a visor and if you're trying to keep it safe at night and you're riding over 20 miles because i know all of you guys have a grizzly probably riding over 20 miles yeah you want you want extra lights on there um so i have four total not all of these are being used at the same time sometimes i have one that basically flash on the floor just like that to to give uh people notification that i'm around but yeah I mean, the cops love them the, 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 the cops love the lights um i think they already know the grizzly this particular grizzly that i ride around san jose often i get stopped a lot um not just from cops like for a lot of people asking about the bike so hopefully i think aerial rider has a few maybe a dozen or so but <laughs> grizzly buyers out there ever since they saw this bike um yeah let me look at my little checklist that i have to talk about talked about the led next one 500 miles yeah so i would check the bike around 500 miles to 700 miles make sure your brakes are working properly they're not squeaking do you need to realign and adjust them let me know in the comments if you guys need help with the brakes like asking about how to realign them maybe i could do a video of that um, but yeah, otherwise that's pretty much it. Yeah, that's it. One thing that I do want to add on here is the additional tools. So I don't have that uh, particular, um, a U-lock. I usually have a U-lock, a, a New York U-lock by Kryptonite here. I don't have that on there because it's, I don't want to make the bike heavy. I only use that if I know that I'm going to stop and lock my bike, but I'm gonna be around today <laughs> so if you're riding solo and when I say riding solo like you're riding 40 50 miles away from home and you're by yourself right I suggest you actually bring a tube an extra tube a bike lever the bike lever is like the prying tool that pries the uh, the tire off the rim a portable pump doesn't matter if you want to do an electric pump or not electric pump like me I've tried those little tiny short pumps those, those are I don't know yeah they work okay they really work but th those are just stupid like you'll be pumping for days there's not enough leverage to actually <laughs> pump that you'll be standing there for like 30 minutes trying to pump one wheel and then you'll realize you pumped it wrong or like one of the tubes like tucked in and you have to deflate and repump. It's a terrible, terrible idea. But yeah, um, and bring your tools. Eventually, you might want to uh, like check your headlights. I'm pretty sure a lot of people like over here. You want to make sure the headlights are, are um, secure. The bolts on the stem here. Make sure that that's secure. Once in a while, I do use a uh, a torque wrench to make sure that the bolts that hold the wheels are tight enough i do go to 40 pounds 40 pounds is what i usually go for just in case and 
another thing with the bolts in the back is that if you're using 40 pounds for tools it's so difficult to actually use a little wrench you need a little longer wrench to actually take those tools off just heads up if you need to change your tires and you have the tools a short the short wrench try to get a bigger wrench because that's not enough leverage i mean like over here you could take off the pegs and put a wrench here and then put push it down that would work but like i said it those short wrench will not give you enough leverage to take those bolts off and i tried it i put like 20 pounds i think i also did 15 pounds with a, uh with an x-class the x-class with 15 pounds was like almost impossible to actually take off with a small wrench but otherwise that is it uh what else oh I put little rubber from amazon why did i do it uh aesthetically um that's another thing to talk about that's it man like this is a really decent bike like i suggest that it you know getting yourself one don't listen to the the threads that people are talking about like oh i've never had a problem with aerial riders customer service like they've been really good they respond to me fairly quick so they're really good at that i'm like i'm really hoping that they will send me another bike I bought this bike, but I'm hoping they send me another bike to test or like, test or somebody if they have like a rotational bike that is for testing. I'm so down for that. <laughs> but otherwise, this bike is so fun. Like I said, I've ridden this from San Jose to San Francisco. That's like 100 and back and forth. It's like 112 miles. So yes, um, don't listen to a bunch of people on thread. They're, well, most of them don't really know what they're talking about and they're they're, they're gonna say that the, the wheel that i have on right now too makes your top speed slower and let me address that so the original tire width is four maybe four and a half close to five so if you guys are know the tire theory is that if you have a smaller wheel you go faster if you have a wheel that is more has more surface contact meaning it's like slick like imagine a skateboard you guys seen a skateboard wheel with the like the urethane completely uh like there's no knobs they go faster so these tires the the shinkos are a three the width is three so it's smaller right and it's the the surface area it's decent enough so it doesn't actually change your top speed maybe the launch like when you start launching it may change the launch speed at the very beginning and the reason why the tires are heavy um i think they're like three pounds to four pounds heavier so it will make your bike heavier in general but it does not change your top speed um another thing is that you know, change your tires at your own discretion one thing about motorcycle tires the bead doesn't sit properly on the the rim so if you're doing your motorcycle tires like the shrinkos they don't sit on the rim so there is a rotational imbalance you, you need to actually deflate and inflate multiple times to make sure that the wheels spin straight or as straight as possible because if you just inflate it like oh i got the wheel on there and you inflate it it's gonna go like this like the wheel will flop around and you'll feel it like it'll make you feel like when you're riding on the bike it feels like it's like jumping you'll feel it like same thing with the car when you buy a car you can't just buy like a wheel and pop new wheels on there they actually need to balance the wheel it needs to spin so so the vibration and all the imbalance doesn't cause any more vibration so that's it just heads up your discretion to changing your 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 tires but they work just fine um another thing that i do want to address is somebody asked me if this bike can be converted to a 72 volts yeah i mean any bike can be converted to a 72 volt you could even go to a freaking walmart and get a 50 dollars bike and convert that to a 72 volts but the problem like i'm, I'm gonna keep the stock the way that it is 52 volts 
no i'm i'm satisfied with the top speed on this because i'm not gunning it down all the time like i'm trying to enjoy the bike if i'm gunning it down just this is just my subjective opinion you know like this is this bike is almost what four grand i might as well buy a motorcycle if i'm trying to gun it all you know, gun the throttle all the time like seriously there's like you can get a grom for like 300 uh, 3000 sorry a honda grom for like 3000 you can get a grom for like two maybe oh, close to 2000 that's used but otherwise like yeah i'm like you should just keep the stock it's supposed to be a bike you know like that's one, one thing that i want to address that and a lot of people will say like oh it, it goes too fast or I'm like if you haven't ridden an e-bike or anything high-powered electric vehicle you should really be careful on your first rides don't just like hey this is so fun i'm gonna gun it down get used to it get a feel for it get a feel on the turn so you don't slide out it doesn't slide under you get a feel when you hit uh, bumps and curbs and like it like at high speeds that's another thing i've seen people like riding their bikes and then like they join a, on a fast uh fast group group ride and then they hit a bump and you just see them hold the steering wheel like this like that's terrible don't do that so yeah man hit me up on instagram uh i do a lot of stories on there um i bought the bike or my rides so coming up today is what what is today it is thursday the 9th of uh june june 9th thursday and this sunday i'm gonna be seeing a couple of couple of guys around the bay area uh, hopefully a couple grizzly riders out there too will come out but mostly e-bikes there's an event in san jose uh this sunday um called diva Cali san jose and then next week friday um there will be this i believe the 17th uh, there's a san jose bike party um happening it's it's supposed to say san jose bike party people with regular bikes but you could practically use any form of transportation you could be on a roller blade if you want or a roller skate because there's literally a guy i don't know how he does it but there's a guy on a roller blade uh during those events and he skates for like 30 miles <laughs> on rough road i'm like i don't know how he does it and like he's not just skating he's like doing tricks spinning around but props to him um but yeah hit me up that's gonna uh i'm gonna end the video sun's out pretty much gone this is not sponsored by costco but there's a costco that i live by the business center nobody's here love this place thanks costco <laughs> why is there nobody here there's no food court so nobody goes here <laughs> there's no food court in here uh in this particular costco so nobody really goes here and everything here is in bulk like much more in bulk does that make sense like if you think costco sells everything in bulk yeah imagine that in a bulk that's what they sell here and then during the pandemic uh, when it started it was kind of funny because like everybody was like oh there's no toilet paper there's no paper towels and all that stuff right well this costco just opened and i'm not joking you half of this costco had toilet paper and paper towels and chlorine clorox wipes all in this costco and i'm like yeah i don't have a problem with any of those during those times so it was kind of pretty cool <laughs> didn't have that problem but anyway, peace out, guys.